we have Anuradha Menon, Cyrus Brocha, and Kanan Gill in conversation with Suresh Balakrishna. The session is titled, May I Have Your Attention, Please? How to Hold an Audience. Anuradha Menon gained fame as Vijay Lola Kuti on Channel V. She's a theater artist and stand-up comic. Her stand-up special... <laughs> Her stand-up special Wonder Menon was the first Indian female special on Amazon Prime. Cyrus Brocha is a multifaceted figure in Indian entertainment. Uh, please. <laughs> Don't. They Sorry, can Google and more. find out it's all lies. Sorry, please. We more. have time to explore this is each not facet Delhi, this of is Chennai. Let's just be honest here. Yeah. <laughs> He's celebrated for his work as a TV anchor, comedian, political satirist, podcaster, and author. Renowned for shows like MTV's India, MTV India's Bakra and CN, CNN News 18's The Week That Wasn't, he's known for his quick wit and unique comedic flair. Kanan Gill is an author, comedian, and actor from Bengaluru. His <laughs> His noted works include Yours Sincerely, Keep It Real, Comic Stan, Achar and Co, and Christmas as Usual. Acts of God is his newly released debut novel. Suresh Balakrishna is the Chief Revenue Officer of the Hindu Group. Woo! <laughs> he has played a pivotal role in the group's growth, reimagining marquee events in virtual formats and spearheading community building initiatives to engage audiences. On to them. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, that's probably all that I'll get to say in this session. Uh, but I'm mentally prepared for that. Uh, the session is about... Ayyayyo, tax evasion and the Hindu, no way. We don't even go on that road. Uh, we are the Hindu uh, Kanan. community. Yeah? Uh, no, no, I, I'm, I'm. No, that's just Kanan Suresh and I. Clarifying, clarifying. No, that was a personal question on the side. Uh, obviously, newspapers do not evade tax no, because no, they do they not don't. generate revenue. Yes. So, <laughs> it's not, it doesn't qualify as a taxable income. <laughs> But Absolutely. we have already taken this panel off. Uh, so, sir, whatever you like, we can begin with uh, any question. Suresh, I just, before you start the erudite conversation, I'm a little upset that first class seating is horrible. They don't have any back space. There's no rest for the back. I mean, these are the richest of Chennai, the, most, the movers and shakers. Look at it, the humiliation. <laughs> uh, I, I personally want to walk out. Uh, Anu, are you ready? Are you, no, uh, no, you're the only minority on oh, the panel. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Actually, I'm the minority's minority. It's a horrible thing, yeah. Uh, one thing I just want to say, um, I myself have a capacity to not pay attention for long. So please bear with that. So I don't know about the audience uh, attention deficit, but I definitely have it. So from time to time, I may not be listening to what you're saying. And can someone give us the score every five minutes? <laughs> okay. um, you were saying, Suresh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Firstly, my first question to you is about holding audiences. How do you, in a matter of, let's say, now you've been on stage for close to two to three minutes, how do you assess an audience? Give us an example. What is your assessment of this audience? How do you read this audience? If they don't abuse you, generally, uh, that's a good start. Also, their body language seems okay for now, until the sun really gets to them. They're all forward-leaning and smiling at everything we're saying and all. It seems okay, but I'm sure in 20 minutes it'll all change. <laughs> it's like India, 47 till today. It's not the same country. Things happen. Awkward silence. Carry on. <laughs> There is the mechanical aspect of uh, what is happening. For example, if the audience is seated, and this was a comedy show, my immediate concern is that about 70% of the audience cannot see the stage. They are, <laughs> yeah, and this, but then too bad a, for you. But then only uh, Anu is a visual delight. So, you I mean, from that That's sense. true, no, and it's to your we'd benefit. Be standing. <laughs> we'd be standing, right? We can do, yeah, we yeah. can, okay. Ah! 
Everything is planned. Okay, they're paying attention. They're, they're paying attention now. You don't have to do that again. They've got the message. I, I feel like I'll get it right this time. Yeah. Saras, let me do it once more. Suresh, this is why there are stunt Suresh, coordinators. Wait, wait, wait. Suresh, <laughs> wicked keeper. Wicked keeper. We don't, make, we don't make enough revenue to pay for hospital charges. <laughs> Suresh, I'm a professional. I do that at every lit fest. Is there a, is there a doctor or homeopath here at least? <laughs> The next year sponsor will be an insurance company. <laughs> Speaking of which, now we've got their attention. Anu? It was all pre-planned, Kanan. Well, everything is planned, Anu. Everything is planned. Guys, every time you're bored, just tell us he'll jump off again. Okay. Take one for the team. I am in great pain. <laughs> I think he, I saw the back go out there. I'm a little worried. I saw you rush to help also. Good news, we're ending in 10 minutes. Okay, when you're doing live shows in front of an audience, and comedy is your forte, if the jokes are not landing, right, or you feel it's not landing, how do you improvise on stage at that point in time? Your material, you obviously have prepared material, but you find it's not landing. How do you improvise? I, I, just I fall off a chair oh, right away. Go ahead. I think. <laughs> but Cyrus, please. Well, I have an old go-to. I just uh, mention Arnab Goswami, I always get a reaction for some reason. <laughs> and I don't even have a joke, I just say his name. <laughs> And then sometimes I say Rahul Gandhi, and that's it. And people start clapping for no reason, depending on which part of India you're in, of course. Yeah. But I find self-deprecation always works, like on a serious note. Yeah. Like you start with a self-deprecating joke, and then you move on. Or if you feel it's not working, you break the flow, talk to an audience member, and then you change tack. I think you, like all of us have enough material that we know that something in our arsenal will work. And if not, there's always hope and prayer. <laughs> Or you can start arguing with the audience, just pick a fight. At least in the North India, I find that works very well. <laughs> because you just have to just say, Bunty, shut up. And that's yeah. it. <laughs> 20 minutes of fun for everybody, lots of galis, no jokes, the way India should be. Yeah. Kanan? Uh, I also do the Hey Bunty, shut up method. <laughs> and uh, He's at every show, that guy. <laughs> dude, yeah, there's at least 30 Bunties yeah, everywhere. Hey, man, really. <laughs> uh, I... Um, Honestly, what Anu said about talking to the audience and assessing the situation is one. Secondly, is asking the audience, is something wrong? Can you hear me? Okay. Very often, like, there are people at the back are like, we can't hear. And that's why we've been listening like this. We can't laugh because otherwise we won't hear the next thing. So it could be silly technical considerations like that. The room is too hot. And if the, none of that, they're like, oh, okay, you just think it's not funny. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> then you just have to take the L and go home. Um. Okay. Okay, the worst part is when you, the joke is uh, actually disliked. You know, like a political joke and perhaps the room is for the party that you're making fun of, no names. And then there's an awkward silence. That's like being at my in-laws for uh, 31st. Like just nobody makes any conversation after that. That's a tough one. And it's happened a couple of times because you're not sure what the market is. For example, here, can we make jokes on uh, center, state? Let's see. Center? <laughs> Scared to put your hand up? <laughs> he put his hand up and went down immediately, that guy. Yeah. Uh, state? Chalo, let's just uh, make jokes on Maharashtra, okay? All right? <laughs> okay. Okay, um, on a more, um, if we can get on a more serious note, uh, today's pressure on all kind of performers, especially in your genre of performing, is that you had the leisure of, some time back when the whole genre started of a two-hour show or a one-hour show, so how did you transcend and how are you managing this one hour show to, you know, 20 minute podcast to 60 second reel to 30 second whatever, how we, and compressing and still being able to being funny on, on, on social media or on stage. How are you adapting to this? Uh, Suresh, I find the question too long, a little lost interest. Uh, Anu, can you help? I mean, these, those are those, you See, know, Cyrus and I have training in television. So, <laughs> no, now fun. acting for a phone is so difficult, yeah, Suresh. Too much. Um, no, I think different, you know, a lot of people, say for example, depending on the medium, so do really well on YouTube, may not do as well on Instagram. The point now is that in order to, the, the dream is to go viral, right, in some form, and then people will come for your live shows. So write a joke for 90 seconds because that's how long a reel is and uh, pray to hell like it'll uh, become really big and then that'll attract people. So the point is now this pressure of posting is immense. And um, I'm a lily liver South Indian, I'm very laid back, I'm not so great about posting on Instagram and my manager keeps telling me, can you sometimes pretend to be interested in a career so I can help you with your son's school fees? <laughs> 
you know? <laughs> so that's a legitimate concern. Um, so I think the, the nature of the beast has changed. Um, and uh, also, you've got to be wary about the kind of material you choose. Like, I stay away from political material because clearly I can't have a skincare routine in prison. So. <laughs> She said something about being careful about material that you choose. How, in recent times, um, how do you navigate that? I mean, how do you know when you're looking at material that this will not create some uh, controversy, some trouble for you? Uh, I can only speak for myself. I find that comedy in India is like marriage. You need to keep saying sorry. So, I do it all the time. I'm just always apologizing, even for the quality of the joke, for the person we may have offended, for the people who don't even know the person that we've offended uh, and are offended. And that happens all the time. So, I no point getting into an argument. People actually come and talk to you backstage and say silly things and, you know, I just say sorry. In fact, I want to say sorry right now to everybody for this show. <laughs> I really, you know, I'm, I'm very apologetic. Kanan, how do you handle this He's edgy upset. material You're where... Upset. Suresh, everybody say sorry to Suresh, please. <laughs> I have uh, handled the transition by turning deeply introspective. And now I have mined, I think, the last frontier of what lies true to my soul. I have gone so deeply inside to find observations. And so that is one way out that I have discovered. The self is a uh, uh, somewhat yeah. potent mind for information. But that also, I think, I am running out. There is no more opinions that I have. I think I finished it. In 10 years of doing stand-up, I don't believe anything more about anything that is okay to stay on stage. Yeah, they may not like the way you said hi. Like, I can't even make fun of my own family. They're like, she just see her making fun of her son. <laughs> I was like, if I have to pay for my son's material needs in this material world, I can use him as material. <laughs> I really get depressed at corporate events because they always say the same thing. No religion, no politics, no sex. And what the hell do we talk about? I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I'm like thanks. Now you tell me, just as we we're about to, does this happen to you? As you All the on. time. Uh, by the way, no religion, no sex, no politics. Well, that's it. <laughs> Usually I ask for an email brief of like, I'm saying, I always ask like, what are the don'ts? And they'll give me like a list of don'ts. And I always start the show by reading out their list of don'ts. And it's always really fun because sometimes the specifics like, don't bring up the fact that the CEO is foot in the cast. You're like, okay, mm -hmm. sir, how come? <laughs> so you don't have to bring it up. You actually brought it up by saying you're not allowed to bring it up. Uh, and these little tips and tricks to get around uh, the constraints in that way. It's possible. A career in comedy, stand-up, etc. How would you, um, in today's time and age, A, would you, so many youngsters here, so many, would you advise them to follow a career in, in comedy, in stand-up, etc.? And if so, what do they need to do? Uh, would I advise anyone to do it? I think if you're drawn to it, you'll find it. St especially stand-up comedy, uh, I feel like anyone can do, but it takes kind of an unstable person to decide to do. And uh, stick with your first few years in comedy are straight humiliation, public humiliation, but because you have to try on stage and you fail on stage. So if your drive is strong enough, or if you are emotionally stunted enough, to not feel the pain of that regularly, you can make it through because it is a lucrative industry now. Uh, and so you can cut your teeth and uh, make a living. Uh, Kanan and I have a slightly different take. I'd like you to not be comedians. The market is not that much. You're taking away our work. So just, you know, and the worst are the engineers and doctors who start becoming comedians because you've already got that bloody seat and a job. <laughs> and then you come to failures like me and take away my market because that's horrible. And I'm going to the center. Yes, the center. And I'm going to an order up show and I will fight this till death. <laughs> if you're a freaking engineer, go and build a bridge. But not in Mumbai because they don't last. <laughs> Really, too many of those guys with double professions, man. Karan, what are you? So after I finish my engineering... You bastard! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, to, to the point of your question, I would absolutely encourage anybody, especially doctors, people with double PhDs, uh, just get in the game. But I would say it takes a, a strange kind of person to choose to do this and a stranger kind of person to stick with it. So I think an encouragement or discouragement at any point is wholly irrelevant. Especially with stand-up, you either get good or you quit. That's the only thing I've seen happen. And or you go to the Rajya Sabha. I think that's a great place to do a yes, material which is acceptable. Canteen is great. I've been there. You've been there? Great canteen. What, would, uh, what item would you recommend at the Rajya uh, Sabha canteen? Uh, they've got a good dosa. Good dosa, okay. And that, that's in the heart of North India. Not bad at all. Okay. Secularism for me. Okay. The Parsi who approves of the dosha Anu, not, not, in for Delhi. You, not, yeah. not for you. Not for you, Anu. Good. You can't park your car anywhere near Rajasabha. It's worse than Mumbai. Because Body. I'm a woman. Or because I exactly. can't park. 
Read the, it's in the title. <laughs> if, if we are going off, just tell us. No, no, you're perfectly just on track. Just bring us back. You're per- no, no, you're, you're perfectly your, on you're track. We're shepherds. talking about holding audiences. Control the canine. Yeah. <laughs> but also when you talk about stand-up, it's not just stand-up, right? There's comedy writing as well. So that's another avenue. So um, you, whether it's writing for Filmfare Awards or IFA, there are so many of these shows that require comedians. And that's a lucrative business and uh, a large um, Why are you financial telling them? stream. <laughs> don't tell them. You have to share the information. It's all about caring and Why? sharing, Cyrus. They're all over-educated. They don't need this If job. you cared and shared, there'd be more Parsis in the world, but there aren't. <laughs> <laughs> My sexual problem is not something I'm going to talk about here. <laughs> okay. Netflix, Amazon Prime, live audiences. What's the difference in doing shows for these? A, which ones do you all prefer? Doing a Netflix special or an Amazon where you have about 100 people there in the studio? Or do you prefer doing you know, shows in auditorium? A, and what are, what's the difference? How do you prepare for it differently? Oh, well, a Netflix special is the culmination of a stand-up tour. So you tour with a show for uh, as long as you feel it takes to get ready. And then you call the same live audience and you tape the show. So a Netflix special is not different from a live show. It's only different because there are cameras there. And, uh, but if you were talking about a Netflix fiction show or an Amazon fiction show, then uh, that's a whole different beast. And the, I guess the difference is, you guys have worked in TV, so I'm interested to know what the barrier to entry there was like. He's saying it like we're so old. You know, TV was that old medium. You guys both made your debut on CRT televisions. <laughs> I was on colored radio. I'm you were <laughs> talking about Manmohan Desai in the lounge, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know, I don't have any specials on anything, so I can't answer that part of the question. I think we'll work outwards from TV. So what was it like breaking through and getting into TV? Well, uh, that was the job available because the bloody engineers were doing engineering in the 80s and 90s, so I was okay. So managed to do that. But television is the easiest medium because you can just do things again and again. That's why my good friend Kunal Vijaykar is successful. Uh, you have a teleprompter, you can redo everything, if people write for you, someone does your makeup, you look less ugly. I mean, television is a joke, honestly. It's, it's the worst medium because you do nothing. You don't even, I don't even wear clothes. I mean, I should, but I don't. I mean, so I, I, honestly, TV is highly overrated. I think uh, stand up uh, audience is the most uh, entertaining for everyone, good or bad. And uh, at the end of the day, it's how you handle your marriage, uh, young Kanan. Hmm. That's how it's hmm. going to come down to. Your bloody specials will come to haunt you at one point. Well, it's, I think it, uh, right now, you use, using the marriage analogy still, um, the aspect of is now, if you have Netflix, Amazon, let's say, uh, the others, uh, you have, so it's an arranged marriage thing. You're going to every house and you're shopping your script and you're shopping your concept. And the strange thing that you realize is uh, actually nobody knows what will work. They don't know and we don't know. So someone has to just take a chance because in a very real way, their jobs are at stake. And in a very real way, your career is at stake. And so what gets made is really a thing of uh, how convincing are you to and someone... how much dowry you have. How much <laughs> dowry you have. <laughs> what is dowry in this analogy? Your connections. In yeah. the range marriage, yeah. So right now, it's the same as, I'm guessing, if you were trying to make a movie uh, like 20, 30 years ago, you have to go and sit with the producer, convince them to give you money. Now you go to the platform directly and convince them, like, okay, this is going to take this much money. This is why it's worth your time. You have to align with what their goals are at the time, which is, is it getting new subscribers? Is it breaking into one part of India that they don't have access to? And okay, Karan, I'm going to sleep. I've got Sorry, I'll say one more thing, Cyrus. I'll say one more thing. on man. I'm too old. I'll say one last thing, I swear, and then I'll go. Uh, sometimes they will give you an outward brief, okay? They'll say, we are looking for young adult shows, go write this and come back. Never do it. Never ever do it. Because by the time you are finished, their brief has changed. And you are stuck with a script you didn't even want to write. You did it because they wanted it and now nobody wants it and the idiot is you. The end. That's all. But just to, uh, when you're talking about a live medium, right? Nothing comes close to a live medium. That's why people flock to, whether it's a small dingy comedy club, because I swear to you, there is nothing that comes close, I always say, to the smell of a musty theater. When you enter, uh, it's like an old library. It's really welcoming, it's really warm. And as, me- as much as you know, Netflix specials and they're fantastic, uh, and no matter how many fancy cameras or Jimmy Jibs you have, you're essentially trying to capture a live medium. And it's never going to be as wow. The, the, the difference is, and the, the benefit is, obviously, I get to sit in my house and watch Dave Chappelle's specials whenever it comes out every six months, right? Um, and I can pause it and, you know, uh, go to the loo, come back, whatever. But when I go to a live show, 
it's that one and a half hours, I don't look at my phone, I don't check anything, I'm just transfixed by uh, the performer on stage. It's on stage with one light on him or her and takes you on this journey for an hour, an hour and a half. So I think, uh, for me, that will always be the purest form of art and stand-up per se is the closest you will be to yourself or who you are at that point of your life on stage. So, yeah. Nice. Um, in your profession, considering a lot of your target audience is youngsters, right? how do you keep in touch with the lingo, the fads, and the obsession of Gen Z? This question is for Cyrus. Okay, I, <laughs> I hate the youth. <laughs> There's a word in Hindi that rhymes with that. Uh, I'm <laughs> not a youth. It not means ghost. I want to talk, to, this is all about ageism in India, I want to talk to the lost audience, the ones who cross 35, 40. Why should they be sidelined? Just because we are wearing diapers and things like that? We will fight till the end. Uh, do not go gently into the dark night, ladies and gentlemen. We will fight these youngsters with their crusade. Uh, these youngsters, because uh, I, I, well, you know, okay, we won't go there. I'm 34. You're 34? Yeah. I'm th 38B. <laughs> wow, we're neighbors. <laughs> Like a Victoria's your, Secret model. Your Cyrus. turn. <laughs> <laughs> this no, but it's a little overrated. Why are we always just talking to young people? No disrespect. We talk to everybody. I think yeah, it's disposable income is also less. That's yeah, why. exactly. What are they going to buy? <laughs> and they're very fickle. They leave you very fast to somebody else. The next big thing. But the old audience, they stay till the end. Till you die, which is soon. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> India, you need to find your, your lobby. That's also, you their your walkers vote. won't allow them to move really faster onto the next person. <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> I think that you're getting a demographic of this audience, I think. You're getting a sense no, of the... I'm telling you, I talk to people about this. It's a lost audience. Why? They're as much fun. Are they still out drink the youngster? Don't worry, on a Friday night, I'm sure. Any 40-plus uh, here, put your hands up. You think you can out drink the younger guys and girls? The, out everything else? Eh, eh? Because there's medicine, Suresh. We'll talk about it backstage. <laughs> okay, um... Let's talk about preparation for a, uh, for a big show. I, that, that distracted me. That's Sushmita Sen thing you did just yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you do it again, please? No, no. Uh, talking about preparation, um, I did good moderator. I did call up uh, Anu and I called uh, Kanan and I called Cyrus and I said, I'd like to talk to you more than a week, 10 days ago. Uh, Kanan and Cyrus were AWOL, uh, unreachable. Okay, okay. I, I, I want to take that. Right? May I take that? Huh? Can I just answer that? What? Is I've not even asked a question. But, but I'm you know? going there. I'm yes. going to give my excuse, our excuse. Yeah. yeah. Cyrus and I were together, so please, lawyer, please tell us. As a lawyer for the defense, he did. The thing is that I'm a little confused because I thought it's a discussion and it's more like an art form than a craft form. But if you want to sit and tell us the questions beforehand, it's like homework, we'll come here and just repeat that. Mm -hmm. So this is an organic show, I thought. So that, the, the whole In idea the South, is, we love homework, Cyrus. Get oh, with the program, yeah. Right, right. My, my mistake. My mistake. Fair enough. Fair enough. Never again. Um, and talk about preparation. One of the things Cyrus said is, I don't like to prepare. So, would like to ask the uh, panel, I mean, obviously preparation is about material, about the audience, about a lot of it is about acting. I mean, stand-up comedy also involves a lot of acting. So, which part plays, you know, how important is each of these coming together at the right time for a great show to happen? And especially the material, the writer's part of it. I'd like you to tell us a little bit about the importance of writing in stand-up comedy. I think this is, uh, I, I guess, different from uh, each person you ask. The process of stand-up is something with the illusion of spontaneity. I prepare extremely, extensively for my show. I know everything I'm about to say. Because if I'm doing a two-hour show, I can't take the risk of not being on that day. It has to work. And so the thing that you're saying is presented with an illusion of spontaneity that I came up with it right now. It has to be immediate. That means I can't use any sort of, uh, any language that is not absolutely common. Not because the audience doesn't understand it. It's because they can't take a second more to process it. It has to get immediately into their brains. Uh, and thirdly, uh, how you say something is a factor of what you're saying. When you are talking conversationally with someone, you'll be a certain amount of animated. And you just amp that up for stage, uh, with the exception of you're doing a big mime act or something. Um, and that's the thing you have to bake in as part of the material. The performance of the material is very much as much uh, of the written text of the material is the, it has occupied the equal status. So where does the preparation happen? Uh, for me, I come up with everything on stage. That means at some point it is genuinely spontaneous. And you have to just remember how you captured that and just keep relaying that, fold that five minutes in, fold that five minutes in, and then when you're touring with the show, obviously there are other concerns about the narrative of the show and this and that. 
But primarily, the preparation happens where first you figure out what the material is, and then the writing and the performance of the material are inseparable, in my opinion. And if you're a good, uh, true mark of a great comic is that even if someone takes your jokes, they can't do it. They can't make it work. Yeah. I always say, yes, it's important to write a good joke, but it's also important to sell that joke, right? So therefore, that's when the performance aspect kicks in. So there are a lot of guys who write great jokes, but I'm saying you need to put in effort in order to sell it. So then there's that element of acting or drama or storytelling that comes into play. So whenever you watch uh, a stand-up special, that half an hour mark is that point where, you know, your attention is waning a right bit. Now, and that's when the performer chair. has to push through, <laughs> right? So then now the fans are on, yeah. I know, the yeah, fans are all over. Literally and metaphorically. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my thing is, again, slightly different. Is I just get bored with my own stuff because it's really mediocre. So after doing it once or twice, the set pieces, I just get bored. I don't want to do with them. I, I used to do plays and doing the plays, saying the same dialogue, the eighth ep, uh, time you do it or 15th time you do it is really boring. So I started changing the lines. So that was a nightmare to work with. But you have the gist of what it is, but it's more fun when you can just, you know, it comes out from there. So I don't know, everybody's a little different, but you, long format, you definitely need a lot of jokes, you need a lot of stuff, you can't just freewheel it. But I think you have to find that middle space. I was, uh, I was talking to Kausta backstage, yeah. and he was saying that even during commercial shoots, you don't stick to the script. Well, he's, so do you, okay. do you at least say but, the name of the product, or do you change the name of the product as well? Yeah, but see, now, let's not, this is not an arrogant thing. You're going the wrong way with this. It's not like genius. <laughs> This is laziness. They're two different things altogether. So don't say, oh, he's so freaking talented, he just does his own thing like Mozart and the opera is made. It's not like that. I just don't want to learn lines. I hate that and I hate teleprompters. I don't know, it's so difficult to, you know, the, the pace of that thing and the way you talk. I talk fast, as you know, so it's a little difficult to do all these Cyrus things. Cyrus is just a beacon of positivity. I should, have, <laughs> I should have been in engineering. I'm telling you, I'm in the wrong damn profession. I had to build a bridge in Mumbai. Stupid Biswa took 20 your years. seat in IIT. That's what happened. Well... Security in IIT is also something, so you're right. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I think that there's no one formula. I think it's a little difficult to answer. Okay. But frankly speaking, uh, I get bored, which is exactly the point of this conversation. Okay. So then yeah. let's ask you some questions which you won't get bored with. Why did you agree to come to this Hindu Lit Fest and um, uh, be part of be this? Be careful of what oh, you I'm ask, Suresh. Hey, hey, why? <laughs> no! No! <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> You young, young man! <laughs> yeah, your organs work! But your wife loves me! <laughs> oh, maybe your mother. <laughs> or maybe her mother now. I don't know, I want to just check our dates here. God, so embarrassing. What was the question? Uh, <laughs> this is very entertaining. No, no, really. apart, no, no. apart uh, from my good looks, why did you agree to come oh, to right, the Hindu right, right. Lit Fest? Very good question. <laughs> uh, the reason is in the, in the title. In India today, it's, uh, you know, Hindu, so I just thought, let's go with that. It's not India Today, it's Hindu. It's both. India Today is another it's group. Both. It's both. <laughs> no, I know you're on LinkedIn. <laughs> you're doing something <laughs> on the side. Yeah, no, 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 listen. This is the last bastion of uh, free thought and free speech. We have to support it. So we've come here. I don't know what's happening in the world, not just in India, but uh, it's a little scary. So I think we'll have to go back to the Soviet Union, the writers who would write in between, you know, read between the lines. You write how beautiful everything is. The satire is actually very sophisticated, which is beyond me, but Kanan will come up with it, hopefully. And so we'll be able to communicate and people will understand and we'll keep going. We'll have to be a little creative. Sorry, I lost you, Cyrus. Don't worry. <laughs> Once it's dark, we'll find each other you again. me till Russia <laughs> and then. Kanan, what was your reason for saying yes to the Hindu Lit Fest? Uh, I've written my first novel. It's only released uh, 10 days ago. And I want to, in earnest, enter the literary establishment. So do everything right. Attend all the Lit Fest, do panels. I'm very happy to do a panel with uh, these two. And uh, yeah, and so this is a nice bonus a day before. Get to chill out on stage. And tomorrow we'll be talking about my novel at 2.30. 2.30 to 2.30 p.m. tomorrow. We will stay here until then. In the, same, in the same hot place, let me tell you. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's why I was excited to come. I know, why, <laughs> did, you, why did you do that? I have forgotten the question. I'm just asking if you have an answer. Yeah, I just came because uh, my family is associated with the Hindu family, so I couldn't afford to say no. <laughs> and my parents pay taxes also. I'm just... <laughs> um, where in the body is the funny bone? Where in the body is the funny bone? The genetic bone. 
What are you saying, Suresh? No, I... It's like a Miss India competition. What kind of stupid questions? I'm feeling I'm sweating like a madman here. Yeah. You ask me, is my funny bone? I'm asking, where's your funny bone? I mean, what are we, 12? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to answer that question? It's like when you're drunk and somebody comes up to you and says, jokes now. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like going up to Virat Kohli and saying, now show me cover drive. You can just go. No, not that way. I didn't mean it that way. No, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know what the funny bone, but I'm the least funny person in my family. You know, I got to tell you honestly, if you just meet them, and they're not trying to be funny, my family members, they're just funnier than I am. And I, so for me, I just look at them and I just get inspiration. Like my mother, I don't know what uh, the Hindi understanding, everybody understands Hindi, but you pretend not to, and rightly so. Um, my mom still answers the phone, and uh, firstly, she calls me Baba, I'm 52, and she tells the person, Baba nahi hai, piche phone karo. That means call from behind. <laughs> in, if you translate it. So, you know, I mean, every day I go to this shit. You have no idea what I'm going through. Uh, I don't need the government to screw with me. I, I live in Mumbai. It sucks. You know, the roads outside, are, they've just dug everything up and buried people there. And they keep telling us metro and this renovation, that renovation. Do something about our lives. Look at Chennai, how beautiful it is. <laughs> and may I say, I don't care if you're DMK, AI DMK, second part of AI DMK, the third part also. Uh, whatever you are, no, I, I'm just not, not my business. Even if you're Shiv Sena Tamil, which is possible because they've got 50 factions in Maharashtra, they've started moving. Uh, this seems to be a very peaceful and happy place, at least for the outsider. Yeah. And the roads look good. Oh, that's beautiful. I have piles because of the pain from the metro construction. They promised me 2019 it'll be over. What the hell's going on? 2019 is over. Yeah. <laughs> So just be careful with uh, road work. Whoever you want in your in power in the state, make sure they don't do in infrastructure. Rechanneling should be looked at. PW department should be taken over by comedians. All right. <laughs> and uh, that's where the funny bone is. <laughs> and he spoke about Mumbai. You have Bangalore and Bombay, right? Um, last few years in Bombay, uh, grew up in Bangalore. Yes, sir. Which uh, is the better so, city? So uh, Kaveri Waters, where are you? No comment at this time. <laughs> yeah, very safe to go Bangalore, Mumbai. What about Chennai, Bangalore? Give him that question. This is the odd knob question you're not asking. <laughs> Bangalore, Mumbai. Tell us about your differences. Which Good for different place, Let's start with better place to party. Better place to party? Uh, depends on what you consider a party. <laughs> if it's political party, Maharashtra, because we've got many more. But a place to party, what do you consider a party? In Bangalore, the activity to do is drink. And so, uh, and in a very positive sort of wholesome, not at but all, this is a problem at, way. The bar still close at 10.30. Now 11. they close at 1. 1! Now they close wow. at 1. So not bad, not Things bad. are fine. On the weekends, we and stay still 11.30. Little bit uh, of construction is a, too much also there, but I won't get into it. The infrastructure is, you know, it's a, what it is. It's better Why than Why do you have to go yeah. anywhere? That's, it's your problem, you decided to leave. Yeah. Uh, stay right. where you are and drink is, it's a very... Easily accomplishable task. Well, they moved the airport to uh, Kerala, but that was ridiculous. It was a master stroke. It was. <laughs> you need two days to reach Bangalore from the airport. <laughs> two hours to reach from Mumbai by flight and then two more days. It's Correct. whatever it is. It's a nightmare. Like how we've descended into traffic now. Yeah. <laughs> but these Absolutely. are the problems of the elite here. Let's I mean, one way of holding audiences really is in the traffic. The elite are private jet Cyrus. Well, I'm no socialist, sorry. No, he's, he's, <laughs> he's bang on subject. One way of holding audiences is in the traffic. So, Chennai, Chennai, Mumbai. A round of applause for this great Chennai? joke. Well timed. Yeah. Chennai. Oh, Chennai, uh, the wait, Chennai wait. girl. One more Chennai man girl is... who's now settled in Mumbai. There's a guy walking I... out. Oh, no, you can't talk. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fine. Sweet. Lovely. Selfie? The... Kanan selfie. Okay. <laughs> um, Chennai I've girl who's Bombay settled a long in Mumbai. Now. So, I say I live in Bombay and I'm coming home to Chennai. Uh, and if Ma I don't win the Mrs. India with that, I don't know what to do. Marathi, Madhi, Mumbai aay. Mumbai, <laughs> not Bombay. Hey, Bombay chal se. Just getting used to her homecoming <laughs> when she goes back. Yeah. Um, people, we got a lot of fan mail when we heard that, a uh, lot of people heard that you were here in this session. And they want to know which is a better way of losing weight, Cyrus. Um, dieting or working out? Transferring stress onto uh, other people. I'll, I'll <laughs> Namely his fellow panelists. <laughs> I'll give you a secret. Uh, diabetes. <laughs> Great. Um, also, my problem is that I went to this, well, probably my best work is a thing called, no, Hello Friends would be the best work. The second best work <laughs> I've done is a thing called Big Boss. Okay. Um, I went there for 24 days and I ate nothing. So I, I was, uh, five kilos went just like that. 
Karan. Big boss? I'm not saying. I'm Big just boss? saying. Yeah. There, there's some positivity in that crowd. If you yeah. bring back Hello Friends, you can count me in. I loved Hello Friends because so much negative feedback. But I mean, I can't imagine why. Hello Friends was, if you don't know, an Indian uh, adaptation, unlicensed adaptation you can, of you, Friends. It's on YouTube. Yeah, I think it's on YouTube. Also, Matthew Perry saw it and, well, sorry. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have. I'm and sorry. And that's why you shouldn't come back, Kanan. <laughs> right, right, right. I think we should. Well, Cyrus I'm, was playing the Chandler. I mean, five to Chandler. go, guys. Five to go. Sorry. <laughs> Cyrus was playing the Chandler role. And Ross was Nikhil Chinappa. So, so no bats for me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anu, tell us about Lola Kuti. Who discovered Lola Kuti originally? And how has it panned out for you? Uh, I've never got any item number offers, I think, because I used to play <laughs> Lola Kuti. But, um, so I finished doing my master's in drama in London, then I moved to Bombay. Oh, and then shit. Gaurav Kapoor, who was a VJ, <laughs> who uh, Cyrus knows as well, he, I just went in for an audition, so he told the, the boss that, okay, she seems to be fun, uh, you know, just check her out. And he says, okay, come and hang with us. So while I was hanging and thinking of something to do, I thought, why not be a character? Because I wasn't cut out to be cool. I think that was it, basically. I wasn't cut out to say, yo, check it out, coming up next and stuff. So I thought, and also no one believed I was from the South. Because at that time, they were like, oh, you can't be Madrasi, you're too fair and you don't have buck teeth. Because <laughs> clearly that's the thing. Uh, and so I just thought it'll be fun to be this character, someone you wouldn't expect to see on a music channel. And then it sort of grew from there. And how was Lola Kitty panned out for you? I, did, I wasn't even allowed to uh, channel the parties because there used to be nightclubs and I used to go as Lola. And they were like, nay, madam, private party chal rahi and that. <laughs> <laughs> Invitation kya hai aapke paas? <laughs> Can we open it to audience questions? Are you guys okay? Take some audience questions. Uh, most of them want to leave, but I mean, it's whatever, no pressure. No, if you ask them questions, they might stay back. Get them we have to ask questions. them questions. No, no. They oh, will ask okay, us cool. questions. Yeah. They will ask us questions. Uh, or don't say three times, you're upsetting my panelists. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think we'll be able Did to reach. We, we are going to not be able to reach Suresh, mics to anybody. Let's so have let some rules about uh, your name, your PAN card number, and your <laughs> income tax uh, certificate last six months at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. I'll, 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 yeah. We'll ahead. get you a mic. We'll get you a mic. One sec. Wait, 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 wait. wait. No, Sorry. it's just a prop. They paid for our flights, no money for batteries. <laughs> Sorry about that. Revenue was less. Just sing. There you go. Hi, uh, my name is Shruti. I don't know my PAN card number. I'm sorry. Um, my question is to Kanan. Are you okay? <laughs> Always with this. <laughs> <laughs> In general, are you asking because I fell? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. Okay, because you look like you were in pain for yeah. half the show. Oh, okay, okay. I no, no, it was. Uh, they, it, I also have a joke I, I about felt this. I the wrong question was asked. You should have asked why didn't uh, Anu and me get up to help him? <laughs> That's how competitive this friggin' market is. Yeah, it cut we throat. We were hoping gone, one less. Their phone started ringing off the hook immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Economy class, you. Sorry, we won't reach you only. Yet. <laughs> You should have spent more. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Pratiksha. I again don't know my bank card number. It's somewhere there in my bag. Uh, but yeah, I've been to your uh, Kanan. Quick questions for Kanan. Uh, I've been to your show before, yours sincerely. I saw it live and on Netflix. Uh, I just wanted to know how was it? Oh, like how did you feel like sharing your story, but to the public? And like when we were talking about holding an audience, how do you think about reacting? How would they react to your story coming out as a joke? No, I mean, not as a joke, but like in, in a humor format. Oops. Oops. Serious <laughs> question. Oops. Serious question. Okay, serious question, brief, really? serious answer. Really? If you're ever worried about being vulnerable with your audience, you will be shocked of how much of your ugliness and lameness you share with strangers. So if you are privileged enough to be in a role where you get to talk to people a lot, broadcast the parts of yourself that hurt and that hurt you. And you'll be surprised how many people resonate with that. So I think uh, right now my back hurts. So <laughs> uh, thank you for your question. It's a very good question. And I felt very comfortable doing it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I can't hear anything. Is that my mom? <laughs> I put the freaking geezer off. She asked me the same thing in the morning. Oh, okay. 
Cyrus, uh, I can't hear it, <laughs> Cyrus, myself, Anthony, and very nice having you in Chennai. Chennai wel welcomes you to a great extent. To a great extent. He qualifies it to a great extent. And, a lot of pressure, uh, a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, and my question to you, I'm, I'm a great fan of your humor, okay? The humor which you carry always in you. So, my question goes like this. Like, you do this show, right? The regular show on humor, right? I, I watch it sometimes, okay? And it's a very nice... <laughs> I mean, that's, that's my fan. It's I mean, a, your, your fans know everything. My fan, twice a year watches the a, show it's and vaguely remembers. But that's, yeah. that's good enough for me. So, it's a very nice show, which you, which you do, okay? <laughs> but my question is, don't you think there should be more kind of these shows coming up in other news channels as well? In other television channels as well? Well, uh, political satire, which we loosely uh, put in that, well, I don't think really, but somewhat in that satirical, it's difficult to do right now. For some reason, people don't appreciate it. And there's a lot of fear. So I'm thinking of going back to the first uh, format, which I was very good at, which is called the circus. And I think that's the, the place to go back and restart the career. It's a little difficult right now. Let's see how it goes. We have to test the waters. Rambo because of your body type, that's why. Something like that. Uh, I was the bearded lady, by the ah. way. Thank you, sir. Um, and if you have a green card, share it. <laughs> and I think there are people at the back wanting to... Ah, there's, there's a lady there, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Nivedya. Uh, There's a question, uh, extension from to Cyrus. So, you have a household name in the political satire and all the TV shows name. Like, you are a kind of an OG. You are one of your kind. So, how do you feel when you are right now amongst all other comedians, like... Do you still consider yourself an OG or like, have you let your household name go or... You set me up for arrogance again. <laughs> How do I answer these questions? I like to predict that You're sometimes. worse than the ED. You ask questions, there's no reply to. I'm, what, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> no, listen, they've changed everything. We were lucky, right place, right time. There was no competition. There were six people working in the business. We all got the same calls, the same auditions, the same everything. Right now, it's far more competitive. That's why I'm saying stick with MBA and engineering. You know, do other things. Don't get into this field. Uh, Kanan's generation is the last of the guys where, you know, uh, they were able to jump up and rise up. It's going to be more and more people. It's, you're going to have suicides and things. I'm so scared. <laughs> so, comedy is a very dangerous profession. Yeah. But they're very nice to me. They are very patronizing. They all, you know, talk to me nicely. They're just being kind. I can't hear you. They're just being kind. They're just being kind, yeah. They give me, <laughs> they give me a biscuit from time to time. <laughs> no, we have a lot of respect for Cyrus, obviously. Yeah. Okay. And I know. I'm a big fan. I used to watch yeah. you guys on TV, so it's, it's okay. crazy. Somebody I told you that the first time I met both okay. of you. Also. Economy class, right uh, at the back. Uh, yeah, economy class. Uh, quick one, Cyrus. You yeah. said that normally you do this extempore, you don't pr prepare. Uh, that t-shirt there, is that just a coincidence? The, one the yellow t-shirt? It's orange. It's yellow. <laughs> Whistle pode. <laughs> Brother, I have to take a flight back. Governments are different in different states. Mine keeps changing every five minutes, I have to be very careful. I keep five shirts. No. Yeah, there are some questions on this side. Coming. This is literally like the position of society. We have all the mics and we're just four of us. And the poor, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> there are a multitude of poor, the disparity. We have 20 mics and three of us. Marie and Antoinette, one mic. let them eat cake. Let them eat cake. <laughs> Yeah, hi. My name is Pranit and I haven't got my PAN card yet. Where? So, who's this? Ah, there you are. So okay. my question is, for those of us who aren't as humorous and funny as you, how do we hold in audience? <laughs> hold the audience. Speaking as the I, I unfunny representative on stage. Yeah. <laughs> You ha just keep going in front of an audience. You will, there's no option. You have to get better or you will Would stop. you like to come up here and do a joke now? They're a very appreciative audience. You won't get a better one. Excuse me, sir. No? Papa, don't just put come him on and take your clothes off and walk off? Serious answer, go to an open mic. Look at other comedians, study what they do. There's a lot of gold to be found. The best people in the world you have access to immediately on YouTube. So you can see how people do things and just keep going on stage and you have to get better. You have no option. So that's the grind is a weird thing. If you choose to keep taking that beating, you will become better. Yeah. 
And also no fear of failure. Like don't fear failing and falling flat on your face. Then again, you say something wrong, they'll arrest you. Yeah. Got a good job, great future, nice wife, little dog, village, house, everything. Why? For two minutes in a stand-up club, one girl says hello, remembers your name. It's not worth it. <laughs> Sorry. Sir, this question is for you. Um, how important is it to have a multilingual, you know, like set to be uh, playing with your audience when you travel especially? I mean, it would be great, honestly. I, I struggle with English, the only language I can speak. Uh, luckily, do you I, throw in your uh, Parsi as well? I can do a little Gujarati, but not enough to do comedy. And uh, Gujarati is not the right language for comedy. <laughs> why? 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 That's, what, why are you laughing? What? That, why? What's, what? Why? What, why? I have no idea. Oh, I can't. This is damn dangerous. <laughs> but, but we do have to mix it up wherever we go. I mean, they'll tell you better than me because they play the market. Literally, you look at the house, the room, whatever. If, put a little Marathi, Gujarati, Hindi, whatever you can speak. If it's in Tamil Nadu, you've got to do a little Tamil. I mean, I mean that just comes to the territory, I'm sure. So, or you'll learn, or they'll throw you out to tell that young man to be careful. It's a very difficult job, trust me, it's much, much easier. You just get a graph, you get a geometry set, you build a thing here, you build a thing there, you call three guys, Raju, come here, construct. That's it. Do the bridge, screw all this here. This, this is not very long careers. Most comedians uh, in their 50s, uh, you know, they basically are watchmen or Uber drivers. I speak of my friend Kunal. Multilingual? You want to the multilingual? You have to be multilingual. So I, I, look, if you're a Hindi comedian, it's a different like that level of popularity you can't touch in this country, right? In terms of views or just recognition or whatever, I think is phenomenal. But it is like really useful to be able to switch between languages and very commendable also to be able to do that because there's a huge market for regional comedy. But if you know Hindi abuse, you can still do ten minutes in the north. That's Atul Khatri said. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, fired one year. Yeah. My actually, one more question was towards ma'am. How important do you think exactly like you said, character, you know, once you pick up a character and then the accent you bring in, how important are these accents? Like, do you think like they add to your comic flavor? Like, you know, I mean, look, it depends on what character you're playing. So I can't like look like this and sound like this and say, oh, hi, I'm Lola Kuti from, you know, Cochin, right? It doesn't work. So you need to create some backstory. So character comedy is very different. Uh, from just going on. So, so initially when I made the transition from Lola to just going on stage as me, there's a huge disappointment. Like a lot, I've got a lot of mail that says, you've taken my childhood and put it in a dumpster and set it on fire. <laughs> because now you speak in this convent school accent, you wear dresses, you have short hair. So I think um, character comedy is a different genre. You, and the accent is a means to an end. Right. Like it can't just be about the accent because then you need some lines also to back it up. Yeah, right. Thank you. Uh, there's a question there. Thank you for the recognition here. Also, coming back to this, we have spoken about what happens on stage. Yeah. <laughs> I think at last I got your attention. Yeah. But uh, again, coming back to it, what happens backstage? What happens when you have a block? What happens when you can't write, when you can't think, when you can't read to figure out what you want to say? Sometimes everyone has a block, a writer's block. or. Uh, I have a peeing problem, which is a bigger problem. Uh, so in the middle of the set, I need to urinate. So I don't really have this problem so much as that problem. We all have our own problems. Uh, problems are unique to the species. Like a tiger's problem is different from a lion's problem. A lion's club uh, member is different from a rotary club member. So everybody's different. So got to be honest here. Uh, this whole thing is overrated, this drop thing, because the main issue is your organs as you age. And let me tell you, hair, this guy's got lovely hair. 20 days from now, you see. They'll be calling the Dalai Lama of the South. <laughs> Love and respect. Uh, you wanted to ask Anand a question for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I really adore you all. And I realize that you all have different facets of this comedy type. And I, I, I am sure that in 75%, I'm mentally unstable right now. And I... I Why are you in the front row? That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> are you carrying a knapsack? Oh, okay. Maybe I am. No, no, she can just come on stage and slap you also. It's been done before. <laughs> that I appreciate. So, I have a delusional idea of becoming a stand-up comedian myself. And I would like to ask you how you evolve yourself to the trends. Um, and how do you like uh, realize that audience are also evolving too? And how do you change yourself to it? Your form of comedy is different for each, each one of you. And I would like to know how you change it for the times. Like, Karan, she's your fan. 
It's on you. No, I'm your fan too. What's my name? Cyrus. Cyrus uncle. No respect. This gentleman doesn't respect. I love. Okay, to answer your question very quickly, how do you change your? You are. You cannot stop yourself from changing. Uh, trying to cater to the audience or the market specifically is always a failing proposition. It never works out and the mark people will move on without you and you'd be like left with a different version of yourself that you altered. That is no use to anybody. And so people will change, you will change. I've only been doing this for 10 or 11 years now and I've seen my audience grow up with me. Now everybody comes with knee pain and back pain and uh, they are all, yeah, now they've got married, they've got one kid, they've got a house. And so I didn't do anything consciously to make them grow up or to grow up myself. This thing happens spontaneously. So I wouldn't worry. You start doing stand-up about the things you think about and you will, your audience will find you. And when you, they don't like you, they will leave you. <laughs> but if you keep doing it, someone else will find you. And it's just going to be that forever if you remain authentic. I love Who else? Uh, yeah, there. Uh, there he is. Hi, Got uh, the mic. This is an Last open question. question to all three of you. Uh, so not often, uh, like... <laughs> More often than not, you're dealing with a hostile audience or a ho heckling. So how do you deal with heckling or a hostile audience? And also, Kanan, please bring back pretentious movie reviews. We love it. Oh, uh, the problem for me is when people are nice. <laughs> I, I come from Mumbai, nobody's nice, so you know, it's much easier. They heckle you all the time. Heckling is great. You don't have to worry about remembering uh, jokes then. You just uh, interact with them. I told you, fight. Fight is great. So, Delhi, Mumbai, those kind of places, audiences like to give back a lot. So, it's always fun. Uh, but if it's really hostile audience, you just get off though. <laughs> if, you, if you really got it wrong, you've got to just get the hell out of there. I've uh, never had a really hostile audience, but I've had dead audiences. Like, especially at a corporate Listen, show, if they they're haven't sensitive. had alcohol. Huh. Like, it, they're quite dead and then you were like, oh shit, corpses would have had more expression. You know, then you have an existential crisis on stage, you think about your life choices, you know, I should have stuck, stuck to baking, you know, gluten-free cakes or something like that. Uh, and then you just get your check, go up, have a glass of wine and then, you know. True. <laughs> yeah, a hostile audience is mostly like a pop culture imagining of what it would be like to do stand-up. Uh, overwhelmingly, people are not hostile. Audiences are uninterested. That is the barrier you have to cross. Hostility, one in a thousand shows. Someone will get up and do something provoke, deliberately to provoke you. But usually it's just like people are eating dinner, they're not paying attention, they're walking out. And how do you capture people who are uninterested will be the main struggle. Hostility is okay. You'll be like, sir, please don't do this. They'll be like, okay, sorry, sir. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> also, there are worse problems than you on stage. Like finding parking to get on that freaking stage where I come from. You know, there are other things to deal with, you know, which occupy your mind. So I think that actually is not the worst part of the day, the hostility. Now you're young and everything is working perfectly well, you don't need a pill, so you're good. Wait 30 years and we'll see that smile. It'll be this small and everything else smaller. Yeah. But God bless you. Satya has got a question here. Thank you for holding our attention. Can each of you tell us one person that held your attention and how? I'm scared of my daughter since I have children. Uh, Karan, uh, Karan's a bit young. So I'm very scared. I'm, I have all alpha females in the house, you know. Imagine Mayavati, uh, I won't mention from this part of the world, but uh, Mayavati and a couple of those, uh, Firebrands, Mamta, etc. in the same house and you're the only male. So I'm completely emasculated, I just, I enter with my head down, I just say sorry and you know, I mean, that's why this hostility question is a waste of time for me. I've got women who are, women are more powerful than men, the energy, the shakti of the female. So when the ferocity of the woman, it's true, I'm not patronizing you, it, it's, so, I'm one of those rare Indian men who's beaten and badgered and bullied. So I don't get this whole thing about, you know, male-dominated society and all that. I, I'm so happy to be next to Kanan and, you know, and Suresh. Because these powerful alpha female figures are just very scary. You know, 60 minutes ago, I knew nothing about Cyrus's prostrate or his marriage. <laughs> well, it's not like I didn't show her. 60 minutes later, I know too much. <laughs> uh, Question was this is a question? The one person, the one who person or what who, has held, who held your attention? attention. Oh, sorry. Um, so uh, there's a uh, woman named Joan Rivers. I don't know. She was. I don't know if any of you know her. Uh, but she did stand up uh, till she was about 89, and then she passed away. So I think there's one way to go. Like on stage till 89, looking a million bucks and uh, making people laugh. I think is fantastic, and that's like uh, something to aspire to.
And Anush, she had close to 65 surgeries huh, by the end. That's why she, she said… She looked like Michael Jackson the day she died. She was… but lovely woman. She said, I wish I had a twin sister so I know what I would look like. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, for me, I don't think it's uh, the, I have the opposite problem of uh, trying to rein in my attention and keep it for myself. I feel like my attention is stolen involuntarily from me constantly by my cell phone or by any other aspect of digital entertainment. And so I have the opposite problem of like, how do I retain my attention instead of giving it away when I don't want to? And yeah. One last question yes, we have. Uh, good evening. Uh, question to Cyrus. You spoke about uh, how many above 40 and things like that. I was waiting for you to ask how many above 70. I would have raised my hand. I follow you. I follow you from you, Eugene days. Oh my God. Right? So you are… You are you 12 years. <laughs> you are 12 years and the humor was at the peak when you are 12 years, 12 years itself. So why did you blank out Eugene totally from the Brighton Beach memoirs? Oh my God. He's talking about a play I when I was 14. <laughs> this is not a fan. This is a stalker. Security! <laughs> Lot of respect, brother. Thank you so much. That's lovely. Little scary, but lovely. Also, just for the record, uh, are we the same age or...? <laughs> Seven years You're two years elder to me. Yeah. <laughs> he gets the last word. Yes. That's he a did. real comedian. He did. He did. He did. Um, I'm sure all of y'all have learned a lot about how to hold an audience uh, in the last uh, one hour. Such detailed, deep, in-depth discussions on how to hold an audience. So much material, so much you can use back home, practice, so you, much insight. was waiting, huh? Right? <laughs> Pent up. You know, really, I was looking forward to this session. Can you see how happy I am? <laughs> Fabulous session. Really great session. These guys are fantastic, right? They let me ask all the questions I wanted to ask of them. And they are so kind, and they are so nice, and they are good people. I don't know why everything is sounding sarcastic, Suresh. <laughs> I don't know, it sounds deeply sarcastic. <laughs> Almost <laughs> venomous. Can I reconsider Suresh on the panel tomorrow, huh? Hey. <laughs> um, anyway, guys, um, I think um, fabulous session. Thank you all three of y'all. You guys were a riot, right? And. I think the crowd and the involvement of the crowd and the kind of question says it all. Thank you so much. A round of applause for the three magic people on stage. And a round of applause for yourselves. It's always louder. <laughs> Thank you. Do we get conveyance? At least. Sorry? Do we get conveyance? Yeah. Backstage. <laughs>